Hey guys, uh, I get asked a question a lot uh, about what hardware I use and what hardware like the pros use. What mouse, keyboards, computers, monitors, everything like that. And how much does that actually help you in game? Is this, is like, are these pay to win? Like, can people with better keyboards or better mice uh, come ahead of everyone else? And so I want to share with people, one, my first answer to that, but two, what I'm running and why I'm running it. So the game in the background is actually a highly competitive game. Uh, this was during the Regen Invitational. I was subbing for an Open Division team, Order of the Sleeping Dragon. Uh, they're a very powerful team. They're uh, high on the rankings for the Open Division right now. And they are doing really, really well in all these tournaments that they're joining in on. Uh, they they actually stomped this Regen Invitational. Uh, and I covered a, a couple games for them. So I've covered for a few open teams. It's and so I would say that I'm at the level where if like my hardware has got to be good enough, right? So getting into this conversation, the first question I always get asked is, uh, does the hardware make a difference in your play? And to an extent, it does, but to an extent, it doesn't. And so I'm gonna first explain the few areas where your hardware might make a difference. The first area is, let's say for instance you're playing on a mouse with a bad sensor. The sensor can make it to where the information you gain from, let's say you move one inch over on your game, if it moves more than that on your screen, more than what you've set it at. Say for instance your DPI is 400, that means when you move your mouse an inch it moves your, your on your screen 400 dots. All right. If at any point you move your your mouse an inch and it moves more or less than 400 dots, then something's wrong. If it's ever inconsistent, let's say you move it right one inch and it moves 410 dots, and you move it right one inch again and it moves 350 dots, that could be a problem of, of mouse acceleration, which needs to be turned off immediately. But it also could be a problem of your mouse's sensor. So watching for a mouse that has a good sensor is important. These days, we all pretty much have just the, the regular sensors that you need, though. The old sensors of the ball mouse had that problem, and we had to worry about that a lot. But now with laser mice being the, the major thing, we see that as, a, as kind of a non-issue. The next thing problem with like mice is that if you have a wireless, like a cheap wireless my, mouse, they might have too much of a latency between the time that you move the mouse and the time that your mouse actually moves on your screen. Not just between that latency, but they also have sleep modes where if you stop moving your mouse for a little bit and then you start moving it, it needs to wake up for a second, meaning you could lose about two seconds in an action. Well, that sometimes can be a very short time, like maybe even a... Uh, uh, you get void prism and you just stop moving your mouse for a second that could be long enough to put your mouse into a mini sleep mode and you could miss a second of movement that's pretty rare but it is something to think about so having a wireless mouse could cause that problem also having a mouse that has the uh the mouse acceleration or any problem with the sensor like a ball mouse then you could actually be at a disadvantage while playing with those mice However, if you're just using a basic uh, mouse, it's perfectly fine. On to the question of what mouse do I use. I use the Proteus Spectrum. It's one of the newer mice from Logitech. It's not very expensive. You can usually pick it up on sale for about 40 bucks. And the reason I use it is because it's the heaviest mouse in the market. And when I get in these competitive games, sometimes my fingers start to shake a little bit. And I found with some other mice, when my fingers would shake, my it would it would push my mouse around a little bit so i'd get like this kind of teetering and i might miss a skill shot because of my shaky hands you just get a little nervous you know what i mean so i switched to a really heavy mouse where the if my fingers are shaking even a little bit my mouse doesn't move at all which means that every movement that i use on my mouse is completely deliberate it's exactly what i want it to do is that necessary for everyone no I fixed a personal problem that I had by finding a mouse that matched my my needs. And that's what you should be doing. You should look for mice to, ma mice to match your needs. Um, and it, it's not like one mouse is going to be way better than another mouse or anything like that. It's just having any new gaming mouse is going to cover it. And you could even go with budget mice. When I was moving up ranks in League of Legends really fast, uh, I, I was using a, like a $10 or $15 mouse that I bought online just because I... I looked at the, the sensor of it, and it was like the same sensor that they were using for all the big gaming mice. And I was like, all right, I'll try it out. It had nothing special, no special side buttons, nothing like that. It was just a wired mouse, 
and it had just a basic sensor and was like 10 bucks so you don't need to spend a lot so what I'm gonna do in the comments below is I or in the description I'm going to put a link in the description for not only all of the hardware that I use but budget recommendations that hit the check marks that I'm talking about for example in the case of uh, the mouse all you need to do is have a wired mouse that has a decent DPI and a decent sensor. So I will put a budget option and the option that I'm using. A few things to note about that too. People ask me all the time, they're like, what is DPI and do you need big DPI? Like there's one guy specifically linked a mouse to me and he said, hey, this mouse has a DPI of 85,000. That's more than this mouse that has a DPI of 25,000. So does that mean the sensor's better? Remember that DPI just means dots per inch. So if you move your mouse one inch to the right, if you're at 84,000 DPI, that just means that your mouse is going to move 84,000 dots, which means nothing compared to 24,000 dots. If you ever ask a, uh, a pro FPS player what DPI they're running on, 99% of the time they're going to answer with either 400 DPI or 800 DPI. If you ask most mobile players what they're playing on, it's usually 800 or 1600 DPI. So you don't need these mice that have like 84,000 DPI because you're never going to touch it. So that's pretty much on the mouse side of things. The keyboard side of things, I personally don't think that there's really any limitations in Heroes of the Storm for keyboards. I think you can get away with just about any keyboard because there's rarely any times where you're going to be pressing more than three buttons at a time. I found in when I was playing World of Warcraft, I had an issue where uh, some of my keys weren't getting pressed correctly and it's because I was pressing a lot of buttons at the same time and my mouse didn't have something called key rollover. So more, most mice have key rollover of about three to four, meaning you will have a, you can press three to four keys at a time and every key past that is going to cause problems with your keyboard because it won't be recognized. All gaming mice have one of two key rollover. They either have 10 key rollover or N key rollover. 10 key rollover means that it can recognize up to 10 key presses all at the same time. Well, you have 10 fingers, 10 keys. They don't expect you to ever go over 10 key rollover. So most gaming keyboards will have 10 key rollover or N key rollover. N key rollover means as many keys you want to press, you can press without any of them losing recognition. So you want that on your keyboards if you're going to be playing a game and utilizing more than three keys at a time. And here's the storm. I never really find myself pressing more than two keys at a time because I will do like alt presses and I'll do shift presses for different hotkeys. But I never really find myself needing to press more than two or three keys at a time. So I don't think it's really an issue for Heroes of the Storm, and I wouldn't really worry about it. For preferences, I use a keyboard with N key rollover, and it's a mechanical keyboard. I'll link it in the description below, but otherwise, it's not really anything that I would recommend you guys focusing too much on. Just get a keyboard that you like. That's really what I would say. If you do play other competitive games that cause you to be running with your keyboard buttons, for example, W and A at the same time, that already presses two keys. You might press a couple extra keys with some other buttons. So I'd highly recommend picking up a 10 key or N key rollover keyboard um, for shooters or for MMOs. On to the last part of, well, there's two more parts of hardware. I'm going to kind of shoot through one of them, which is the monitor itself. Uh, when you're working with buying a monitor, the only thing that actually makes a difference with a monitor is the response time. Uh, people will say, oh, well, widescreen gives you an advantage because you get to see more stuff. You should be moving around your monitor enough to where that, or you should be moving around your screen enough in-game that the size of your monitor or the, the uh, ratio of your monitor shouldn't matter at all. But the, uh, the resolution can make it lag a little bit if you don't have a graphics card that's that good. But honestly, that's not a big deal. You can bump down settings. Or you could just bump down the resolution that you're running it in. But response rate's the main thing that could actually make a difference. And uh, you'll know that most pro uh, FPS players will be running on monitors with a one millisecond response time. And response time is defined by uh, how fast a monitor can move from a white... Uh, or sorry, that's a refresh rate. A response time is, uh, is essentially just how fast you can get a, uh, a signal from your graphics card. So your graphics card is rendering something and then it sends you a single frame. And in the time that it takes your graphics card to send it to your screen, 
is the ref the response time and you want to make sure that your response time is lower than eight milliseconds for mobas um eight milliseconds for some people is still considered slow for mobas because you can add that into like your your latency and all that so it could get pretty bad and you can miss specific skill shots if it's too slow I usually run on my four millisecond response time uh, monitor. I do have a one millisecond and I have an eight millisecond. And the eight does feel like there might be a couple skill shots here and there that I might miss because of it. Um, but the four millisecond, I feel like I never miss the skill shots as long as I'm on uh, low ping. So that's where I would really recommend uh, having it is if you're gonna worry about keyboards at all, or I mean monitors at all, just look for something that's like, I would say eight or lower, eight's, eight's pushing it, maybe five or lower, uh, then you should be pretty much good. Most most modern monitors, unless you're getting like IPS monitors or uh, OLEDs, you'll find that most monitors have a, uh, a pretty ro low refresh rate, uh, or not refresh rate, response time. So that's not too bad. And the last thing that I that I want to talk about is pretty much hardware. Uh, you'll notice that uh, if you can run this game smooth, it feels much better to play the game, and it's a lot easier to actually like do everything if you're running the game really smooth. So I'd highly recommend people have pretty good PCs, and if you find yourself not sitting at 60 FPS um, frames per second anyways, which you can check by doing Control alt f and it'll show up in the top left screen. Uh, if you're not sitting at like 60 FPS, you may find yourself, because like, if your game chops at the wrong time, you could miss a skill shot. So you'll see a lot of pro players, they'll run on really low settings just to make sure that there's never any point where they cut out of the game. I record a lot and you guys watch the recording, so I play it high because I want to make sure the game looks good for you guys. But uh, again, like if it even lags for a second, it could cost you a kill. So making sure that you have hardware on your computer that actually helps you uh, is very, very important. And what I would usually recommend is build your own computer, learn how to do that. It's a very good thing because you actually know what's in your computer, you know what each piece does and you know what's needed to upgrade and how much it'll actually cost. So if like your graphics card dies, you don't need to go to Best Buy and pay $500 to fix something when uh, you could just buy a new graphics card for 200 and fix that thing. I personally don't use very expensive stuff. $200 graphics card, $200 processor, nothing too expensive. Um, the rest of the build's up to you. I think I've got like 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's not a very expensive build at all. My gaming PC that I use uh, is is very similar to my office PC. They I don't spend a lot on it because I personally don't really need it I play on high and record and stream without really any issues and I do this uh, I stream it or I record it 1080 60 FPS on high uh, The monitor that I'm actually playing is a 1440 uh, But I when I record I don't record it that but uh, yeah, that's really what I would say is there you don't need anything too fancy with that. You don't need to buy like those $800 graphics cards for Heroes of the Storm. It's just not needed. So uh, to, to finish off the questions that I got earlier of uh, do you need the special hardware to win games? No, you really don't. It's not pay to win. I'll throw budget options of everything down below. Um, and on the same sense, is there any benefits to getting some of these? I mean, sure, there's sometimes macro keys. But people don't really use macro keys that often in games. Like, there's very few things you can actually use macro keys for. I think that maybe if there was, um, I don't know. I, I don't really use them for anything. I have macro keys, and I don't really use them for anything. So, and I don't think you really need to use them for anything. But it's all preference. I mean, find what you want to use. Find what works out for you and make it work. Uh, but nothing's really required. I know there's there's mice that you'll see that are like built for MOBAs and there's mice you'll see that are built for FPS games. But if you actually talk to the pro players, oftentimes they're not using those mice. They're just using something that they're comfortable with and that's it. Um, I myself, again, for my mouse, I use a Spectrum. I know Bam Bam uses a, uh, a Razer Naga. Um, I know uh, a few of the... Uh, the pro players that I've seen anyways, they all use just pretty similar mice. The I used the course or the um, Steel Series Rival for a long time. And again I never felt like that held me back either. It was still a heavy mouse, answered my problem, and it was good. So 
I don't think you really need anything in, in particular for uh, MOBAs. I think it's mainly, even shooters and stuff. I mean, shooters and, M and MMOs, it, MMOs, I mean, keyboards that have like extra macro keys is nice because you might need to want to save macros for typing specific things uh, like guild invite stuff or whatever. Like that's always nice. But overall, with MOBAs, you don't need anything special. But if you do want something that's just more comfortable, uh, feel free to check out some of the stuff that I run. I love all of my hardware that I use. I'm picking up a new keyboard, so I'm actually going to link the new keyboard that I'm buying instead of the one that I have, only because I've used it before and I really like it. And the keyboard that I have now is actually not for sale anymore. So I would feel free to check out all of that uh, in, the, uh, in the description below. Thank you all for watching. I know it's kind of a different video than I normally do because I normally do videos on, uh, I talk about the gameplay that you're seeing in the background. In this case, I didn't talk about it very much. Uh, I was more talking about the uh, hardware, but the hardware is just a question that I get a lot. And I didn't really want to do a video on it because to me, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. But I figured I would clarify the few areas where it might make a difference. So, uh, for ch like, if you really feel like your mouse is holding you back, the first thing I would always recommend is turn off uh, mouse acceleration and stuff like that. But if you really feel like your hardware is holding you back, check out the description, see what I'm running. If I get it grandmasters using the hardware that I'm using, then so can you. And same thing with, with other pro players. I see what else they're, the other stuff they're running. There's no specific MOBA keyboard or mouse that everyone needs. There's no specific MOBA monitor that everyone needs. It's pretty much across the board what people are using. So feel free to use what actually feels good to use to you, for you. Thank you all for watching. Really appreciate it. And again, feel free to check out the description to see everything there. I might toss in the comments as well. And uh, always appreciate subscribes.